Welcome back to the Sith Taker YouTube channel for episode 3 of Sith Take 2.0, our X-Wing Miniatures Match Report series showing off Stockport's finest X-Wing pilots. Today we're joined by two worldies, we have Tom Reed and Jack Mooney, let's meet those players now. Hi, I'm Jack Mooney, I've uh, been playing X-Wing for about three and a half years. Uh, my favourite list of 1.0 had to be Hannah and Jake, definitely. Hi, I'm Tom Reed. I've been playing X Wing for a little over four years, and as no surprise to many of you, my favourite list in 1.0 was uh, Triple Jump Masters. Uh, the list I'm bringing today involves having three Y Wings all kitted out, so they've got Proton Torps, Proton Bombs, Iron Turrets, and R3 Astromex. And I also have to bring Leia because I'm using the Invitational Rules for practice, so she's going to be sitting on the Sheep of B. So the list I'll be using today is two Skimitter Squadrons with Barrage Rockets, a Captain Jonas with Barrage Rockets and a Ruthlessness, and Whisper with Duke, Advanced Sensors, Darth Vader Crew and a Stealth Device. So Tom has less points than me, so he's going to have the choice to give me initiative, but I think he's going to take it for himself so he can move first and guarantee those focused tokens, which are going to be pretty much um, reliant on for his Barrage Rockets. So the list, this list is coming in at 195 points. Uh, free ruthlessness because we're doing practice for the Invitational for Jack and the bid is mainly for Whisper uh, only at PS5 but still quite useful and also I didn't think there was anything more vital than the bid um, not going to make much of a difference today apart from it lets my twos move after Jack's twos um, gives me a little bit of play there I don't think it'll be a massive deal but um, quite useful for the first engage potentially so ideally I want the rocks placed in a position where I can fly forwards uh, into the joust. Um, my list is built around jousting with the ions and the proton bombs, so hopefully I'm going to fly in, get into range one, ion a few of the ships, fly past the K-turn which is going to be wiped with Leia, uh, so the ships going to take proton bombs and then proton tops from behind. So that's practically going to be the strategy going into this game. With the rock placement, I'm going to be spreading mine out to the corners. Uh, I know Jackie's carrying ion cannons, I don't want my ships getting involved with uh, not being able to shoot missing turns um, and also I want the manoeuvrability for Whisper. Should I get in really close I want to be able to get that barrel roll. I think they're more useful for him so they will be going wide and spread out as much as possible. So the problem I'm going to face with Tom's list is he has the little mini swarm of bombers but he also has Whisper. If I focus the bombers Whisper's going to come in behind or the side potentially make it a bad day for me. If I focus on Whisper, the bombers are going to get free range as well. So hopefully I can deal with the bombers quick enough to then have enough ships left over to deal with Whisper after. General strategy for this is going to be the bombers are just going to slow roll into an area. They're going to hopefully dominate that part of the board. Um, the idea will be jumping from out of range into range 3. So to prevent too many locks of his coming in, prevent his missiles going off, but let my barrage rockets going off. There's no specific target priority, just hopefully nuke something that comes into where I want it to be. Um, following that, the bombers are just going to hopefully cover an area as Whisper flanks um, from wider than the bombers are. Uh, Whisper will probably cling to a board edge to start with and then sweep in once the fight starts. It's your choice. You're giving it to me. Oh, I'm surprised by that. I thought you uh, were going to take your piece off. Yeah, so I'm reasonably happy with how the rocks have gone down. I'd prefer more towards his side of the board, um, giving me different angles of approach. But in the main, that's fine by me, where they are. So I'm fairly happy where the rocks are. Um, I have plenty of board space on his side to cater to get behind his ships. Um, there's one rock which is slightly too far in for my liking. I would have preferred it a little bit further out to give me some more space. But other than that, I think I can play around it. Yeah, so now setup's completed. I'm pretty happy with how it is. I knew giving initiative over gave me the option to move away from the joust, which I feel like I come out second in. Um, I've decided to put Whisper with my 
the rest of my squad. I didn't want Whisper to get isolated and cut down early. So deploying all as a unit, try and leverage that in the first round of combat when um, we try and remove a target um, with Whisper being reasonably close and some Bowers rockets following that up. Um, I feel that the asteroids are going to hopefully protect my one flank as I move in and into the side of um, Jack's engagement as well. So deployment's finished, uh, Tom's giving me initiative, so I'm going to move first. Uh, that means I can block him to stop his focus, but it does mean he has the advantage uh, on deployment, which I can reposition and potentially get the engagement I want, but it's going to be a lot more trickier um, to get that initial engagement. But um, I'm quite happy that the Phantoms with the rest of the squad means that I'm not having to worry about my flanks. I can uh, fly in, drop the bombs, see how that goes. So uh, hopefully the uh, proton bombs going to carry me on for this game. So all my ships are going to answer it first because Tom's giving me initiative and they're all PS2. So we're going to start with this Y-Wing, he's doing a T forward. And then after completing his manoeuvre, he's going to do a barrel roll. So I'm going to perform a barrel roll to the side. Moving the ship forward in the process, and it is a red maneuver, so I get a stress token. So, next up is Zeb, he's revealing a hard two. We're gonna do the maneuver, and afterwards, we're gonna take a focus action. So, next, we're gonna activate number one. He's uh, the next wire wing to activate. He's doing a hard two. We're gonna barrel roll him, and again, we're gonna go forward with the barrel run, which again is indeed stressful. And finally, the last wire wing is doing a hard two as well. It's going to perform the manoeuvre and perform a focus action. So Skimitter Squadron Pilot number one, he's going to be doing a three forward and taking a focus. Bomber number two, he's going to be doing a four forward and also taking a focus. Captain Jonas will also be doing a three forward and taking a focus. And Whisper is going to be doing a four forward and cloaking. So there'll be no engagement in turn one, and we're moving on to turn two planning. Turn one, I didn't entirely expect Jack to turn away. I thought he'd come through the rocks that he deployed opposite, and then turn in to face me. Um, I feel he wants to fight in the open ground more, um, utilising layer potentially, um, especially with me having no bombs. So Tom's moved his bombs up, I would expect, just moving forward up the side. Uh, there's no reason to cut in yet. Uh, this next turn coming up, he probably will cut him, um, just because of the way my ships have moved. Uh, and currently, I'm trying to reposition uh, to get the all important chow stuff. Uh, it's not looking like it's going to go the way I want it to, but that's excellent for you, so we'll see how it goes. So, my intention is to rush into the area where I can turn to my right and hopefully engage him as he starts to reposition his ships. Um, this won't allow Whisper very long to reposition and get into a better place, but I hope that the engagement taking place before he's in an ideal scenario will make up for Whisper not being in the best place. So start of turn two in system phase, Whisper will be decloaking two forwards. So first off I'm going to activate number two, my Y-Wing. He's doing a one bank which is green, so we're going to remove that stress token and he's just going to perform a focus action for now. So next up is Zeb, Zeb's going to reveal a soft bank, I forgot I changed my mind but there we go. So after completing his manoeuvre, he's, again he's just going to take a focus for now. So next up I'm going to activate both my remaining wirings, each of them are going to go one forward, this guy's going to remove his stress in the process and then they're both going to take a focus action afterwards. And the last focus. So all of the TIE Bombers are going to be performing a three bank to the right. They're then going to bow a roll to the left and forwards. The TIE Phantom is also performing a three bank to the right and will also barrel roll to the left and forwards. So at the start of the end phase, Whisper is going to spend the evade to recloak. There will be no combat and we'll be moving on to planning turn three. So Tom did start cutting in as a fort. Uh, I thought he might have done the hard turn and come through the rocks rather than go all the way around but the softening the barrel was also a decent choice. 
Uh, my ships are going exactly where I want them to be. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to reposition them as quickly as I'd like. But we'll see how it goes. So, reasonably happy with positioning as this turn goes. Um, I didn't expect him to retreat into the far right corner as I look at it. I thought we'd be closer going into this turn. Um, I thought the combat would actually take place after this movement. So, my movements were based on that. Uh, I feel like I'm going to be chasing him a little bit into the centre of the board now. Which is something I wanted to avoid. So, maybe a slow roll after this quick turn. Um, but we'll see how turn 3 pans out. So my plan going to turn 3 is I'm going to activate layer. I'm going to get all those nice white key turns in. Defend a Y-Wings for the win. Uh, and then also, uh, there's a manoeuvre on Zeb which I'm going to use, which is the one reverse. It's maybe not the best manoeuvre, but I just want to show it off, so we'll see how it goes. So system phase, turn 3. The is going to decloak forwards and gain an invade token. So at the start of the activation phase, we're going to activate layer. We spend three charges and I can perform all my red manoeuvres as white manoeuvres for the turn. First thing we're going to do is activate this wire wing here. He of course is doing a 4k, which is now white. So after performing the manoeuvre, I'm just going to take a focus action. Yes, so next up we're going to activate Zeb. Zeb is revealing a 1 reverse, which is indeed white. So after reverse him, we're going to give himself a focus token. So next up we're going to activate both wire wings at the same time. Again, both revealing a 4k turn, and after performing them, they're going to do a focus action. So what we're going to do here is mark up Zeb. We're going to perform the 4k, take the focus action, and then we're going to put Zeb back where he should be. And again, the last wire wing, he's going to perform his 4k, finish his manoeuvre, and take the focus action. So bomber number one is doing a one bank to the right and acquiring a focus. Bomber number two, He's going to be three banking to the right and also acquiring a focus. Captain Jonas, also one banking to the right and barrel rolling to the left. Whisper is three banking. Going to barrel roll to the right. Whisper's going to spend her, folk, her evade token and she's going to cloak. And at the same time, Laser's going to recharge one of her free charge tokens. So after that turn's manoeuvring, I'm um, in a pretty good position. The only problem I have is number two is a little far out, so we're going to have to swing him back in. But apart from that, I'm quite happy with the position going into the next turn. So this turn is looking like two separate battles. One I'm pretty happy with, one I'm not very happy with at all. We've got the three bombers going into the one Y-Wing. Uh, I suspect that will come out in my favour, three barrage rockets. Um, should hopefully either leave a Y wing very crippled or removed. And the only small problem I have is number two, he's quite far out in the field. This turn he's going to have to turn him, which doesn't leave him in a good position, but hopefully it should just be able to stay out of range of all his bombers and next turn get them big that one. Um, the only problem is I'm going to have to stress myself with a barrel to, to uh, block one of my own ships. Um, I'll see if I can play around that, but time will tell. Unfortunately, Whisper in the other battle has presented herself in a very weak place. Uh, I'm now going to try and rush at the Y wings and get inside the torque range. Um, Potentially the decloak was a poor choice into where I went, but we shall see how quickly they go forward. I'm taking the gamble that they're going to rush forward to acquire target locks on me. So this turn, I know his Phantom's going to have to decloak to the left. He did a barrel roll to prevent me getting a target lock off this turn, but I can play the waiting game and get one off next turn. This means that I know his Phantom's going down the side of the board, so I can slow roll the Y wings and then come in next turn. He can't one shot the wire wings of a phantom, which means that I'm definitely getting off proton top to the catch him in arc. Jack's movement in itself was a little bit unexpected. I thought he'd keep following round right to the rocks to keep his squad together. Um, in breaking them apart, I feel there's one weak part, but also his two Y wings facing down to Whisper are in a good place and not something that I anticipated. So this turn I'm going to try and move my ships away from his bombers and reposition for the next turn uh, and then the turn after we're going to try and get those torps off but it's going to be tricky. Whisper here, decloak to the left and forwards. So I'm going to activate these two wire wings, they're both going to do a one forward. The original plan was to move Zeb first and then perform a barrel to block this wire wing. However, I'm just going to use Zeb to block my own wire wing in the process and not gain the stress which I didn't want. 
so the wire wings is going to shunt forward. He bumps, so he gets no action. And then the second wire wing is going to go one forward and perform that focus action. So we're going to activate Zeb next. He is doing a two forward, so we're going to move this wire wing out of the way. It's going to perform the two forward. We're going to quickly put the wire wing back because we're going to coordinate a focus action to the wire wing which bumps. So the last one I'm going to activate is wire wing number two. He's turning away from the bomber swarm to try and avoid those barrage rockets. And we're going to actually turn this as an action to get my iron cannon facing the right way if I can actually get in there. So all the bombers will be doing the same thing. They'll be going three forwards and acquiring a focus. And Whisper's going to take a focus token. So that's the end of the movement phase. They will be moving on to combat. There will be combat this turn. Uh, starting with Whisper. Yes, yeah, so that turn of moving has gone pretty well for me. The bombers look like they're just out of range, which is why I hard turned the other wiring in. It doesn't give them the best position for next turn, but I'd rather not take potentially nine damage and die in one round of shooting. So uh, we're going to see if I can plink some damage through on Whisper. If I can, that's nice. If I can't, well, we'll see what happens next turn. So this will be the first engagement of the game. Uh, it's not gone the way I planned it to. Uh, Whisper, I'm hoping, is range three. I need to avoid those ion turrets. Uh, however, I do also feel that I've missed the range on the bombers and therefore I won't get the barrage rockets this turn, which will mean I'm losing the engagement at least two ships to one, which is not what I had planned. So start of engagement phase, we're going to measure range two from Whisper to check whether I can use Darth Vader this combat or not. So there's going to be no Darth Vader activation this turn. So Whisper will be engaging Y-Wing number three with three red dice at range three. It's going to result in two blanks and a focus, and I'm going to leave it at that. I'll roll my dice for the sake of it, and I got one natural. Wasted, but at least I'm not taking that. Wiring number three is going to engage on Whisper. Unfortunately, I can't use my iron cannon, so I'm using my two dice primary. I'm going to focus for two hits. There'll be four green dice from Whisper. <laughs> Resulting in that is. <laughs> so now wiring number one is going to take a range three shot at Whisper as well. Uh, again, we're going to focus for two hits. And again, four green dice from Whisper. Resulting in one evade and three blanks. Adding an evade token to keep my stealth device intact and get the two evades. And finally, Zeb's going to take a range free shot and try and plink some damage through. Uh, we've got two hits. And I'm going to spend my focus token to get the three evades. Um, so this turn, my Wyoming's are going to try and get some tops off on uh, the Phantom. Slightly unlucky that he spent his uh, evade token so he couldn't cloak. If he had the cloak, he'd have to decloak forward and then I could K-turn behind him. I can still do the same tactic, but it's not going to be as effective, so we'll see if I can get some nice tops off or not. So this turn we're going to slow roll the bombers over to the left, reassess at the start of combat and uh, pick our best target at that point. Whisper's got a two bank to the right dialed in. I'm hoping this will allow me to some shenanigans with advanced sensors, potentially engineering a bump that is most favourable, or just bumping the target that's in front of me and reducing the shots coming in. Uh, I feel Whisper is in a slightly bad position, and this is the best of a few bad options. So we're going to activate Zed first. Gonna do a soft one. After performing his mover, he's going to coordinate the target lock to this guy. And number three is going to coordinate the uh, target lock onto the phantom. So we're going to activate number three. He's going to do a K turn. Unfortunately, I can't activate layer this turn, so it is going to be stressful. So we're going to activate number one. He's doing a banking. His action is going to be to target lock onto Whisper. And after I perform a target lock, I can perform a secondary one with R3. So the second target lock is going to go onto the first bomber. So the last wire wing is going to do a hard two. I'm going to move him in, and again he's going to perform a target lock action. It's going to go onto the Phantom, and then I assume it's out of range, but we're going to check range for the far bomber, which is indeed out of range. So all the bombers will be slow rolling to the left with a one bank. And a focus. And three focus tokens. So Whisper's going to use advanced sensors. She's two banking to the right 
I'm keeping these locked up. She's going to bump this wiring here. So at the start of the engagement phase, Whisper is going to use Darth Vader crew to deal a damage to Y wing number one. So first big engagement of the game. Uh, I'm relatively happy with how the turn evolved. I wasn't convinced about positioning originally. However, at the start of the engagement phase, I'm reasonably happy. I'm taking a torp to Whisper, uh, another torp to a bomber or potentially an ion cannon into Whisper as well. Uh, I'm hoping Whisper survives this turn, but I'm hoping also that the bombers start to do work on Y wing number one. Uh, plan for this turn, remove that Y wing and move through the board, um, slow rolling the bombers. So the start of this engagement, I'm fairly happy. There's one Y wing that's not got an arc, but he's in position for next turn, so uh, it's a fair trade. Hopefully the Iron Cannon at range 1 with 4 dice and the Proto Torpedo with 4 dice should be enough to uh, finish this Whisper. So uh, we'll see how it goes. So Whisper at range 1 rolling 4 dice into Y Wing number 1. So that has resulted in a hit, a crit and 2 focus. And I'm going to not spend my focus token. So I'm going to roll 1 defence dice. I don't get evade, so I take a shield and a crit. And the critical is a stun pilot. So when I execute a maneuver overlap, I take 1 damage. So Whisper scored a hit. Gaining an evade token. Next up, it'll be Captain Jonas firing Barrage rockets into Y Wing number one. So it won't be through a rock, so it'll be three attack dice versus one defense dice. That has resulted in a focus and two misses. Captain Jonas will use his ability to re roll the two misses. Spending focus, getting the desired three hits. And I get the one evade, so I take two damage. Uh, so Y Wing number two is going to fire his Proton Torpedoes at Whisper. And that was a really bad roll, so we're going to spend that target lock and try again. <laughs> and that's probably game. <laughs> so after failing to hit Whisper at all, we're going to change the tactic and fire a Proton Torpedo at number two in the hopes that we can try and get a blinded pilot or something. So luckily this dice can't go worse than last time, so we're going to see what we're going to get. Um, we've got two hits and a crit, and we're going to spend that target lock and re-roll the focus into another hit, and we change one to a crit with proton tops. Two dice from the bomber, it's going to miss, so we're going to get two hits and two crits. So damage onto number two is two hits, a blinded pilot, <laughs> and a fuel leak. Ah, oh, I've only got them the other way around. So skim it to squadron number one, we'll be firing a barrage rocket into Y-Wing number one. We'll be using Captain Jones' ability to re-roll the blank and spending a focus into the three hits. And the one defence dice is going to get three damage onto the Y-Wing. So skim it squadron number two is going to be also firing into the one health Y-Wing remaining and uh, it is blinded so I need a good roll. <laughs> and the defence dice doesn't matter at this point, but I take a hit and a crit and die. At the end of engagement, Whisper will spend the evade to recloak. So the engagement last turn did not go anywhere near expected. The uh, zero hits out of eight dice was disappointing to say the least, so I had to change the tactic, hence I fired the proton top into the bomber, hoping to get a blinded pilot. I did, but it didn't pay off. Um, so we're going to see how this round goes now. So first big engagement uh, has drastically gone my way. Some dice uh, swung heavily in my favour. A fluff from a torpedo has meant that Whisper avoided the second shot. Jack felt there was a better option on the table. That did a lot of damage to the bomber, but the blinded pilot didn't make any difference. Another lucky roll out of hand meant that I've removed a Y-wing and I'm quite heavily up now, I feel. So this turn Tom's probably going to declip to the side of his Phantom hard in. I can't block this, I can't even get arcs on him so there's no point even trying to go after the Phantom at this point. The new tactic is to turn in, uh, I'm going to get double stressed on my wiring but it's probably worth it. Just try and weather the storm and then drop proton bombs. I've got four of them, hopefully he can kill the bombers, do some damage on the Phantom. And that's the only way I can see a swing this game back round at this point. Moving into movement for this turn, Whisper and one of the bombers, the injured bomber, is now going to disengage and chase um, any of Jacks that decide to head off to the side. So that'll be uh, the small Phantom, Stealthy Pete. Uh, the two other bombers are going to slow roll. Hopefully another barrage rocket target will appear. Um, there's always a chance that that Y-Wing that's already locked on Whisper is going to K-turn. 
If it K-turns, I have to absorb the torpedo, but I will put a whole load of barrage rocket shots into it. The stress wiring, I'm not really sure what it's going to do. Um, I'm going to decloak in front of it, hopefully block it from achieving too much, and then move away from it, potentially barrel rolling right to get out of its arc. Whisper, he's going to decloak forward. It's just an extra attack. Oh, it's an extra attack. Gain in the evade. <laughs> so wiring number three is going to do a hard two. This is just so I can get into range one so I can't get barraged. I do land on the debris as I thought I would, so I'm going to receive a second stress. And we're going to roll for the debris field. And I don't take a damage. So Sheepy P is going to do a hard two. We're going to coordinate your focus over to this Y wing. And that's the Sheepy P dump. So Y wing number two is going to do a soft free. This is going to bump. So we're going to quickly mark up that phantom. Let's give it a number one. He's going to slow roll and take a focus. Moving this Y wing out of the way. The damaged bomber. He's going to three to the right, and he's going to focus. Captain Jonas is also slow rolling, one forward. Whisper moving past this Y-wing. And three bank to the right. Gaining a focus. To start the engagement phase, Darth Vader crew is going to deal damage to the stealth and So range one Whisper with four dice into Zev. Spending the focus for three hits. Yeah, two defense dice. Um, all three damage is going through. So gaining an evade as I hit, moving on to Jonas, a barrage rocket into Y Wing number two. Using my own ability, I re roll the two blanks. This is where Resulting in two crits. I get one defense dice. And the two shields. So number three is going to use his iron cannon at range one and try and iron his number one skimmer pilot. So I get one crit. So now Jack's pointed out that it's first damage before I even take an ion token, I will definitely not be spending that. Much. So Wyoming number two is going to try and ion uh, number one as well. <laughs> so we're going to spend that focus in the hopes that I actually get an ion free. So I'll take one damage yet again and avoid the ion. So Skimmeter pilot number one is going to revenge shot that ion turret attack with a barrage rocket. Rerolling the blank with Captain Jones's ability. Spending the focus to two hits. And the one defense dice takes two damage. So Zeb's going to range one onto the injured pilot. And we're going to try and get a sneaky crit through to get that fuel wick. And the blinded skimmer pilot is going to try and kill off Zeb. Oh, Jesus. resulting in double hit crit. We should uh, see off Zeb. Yeah, I'm dead regardless, but I'll get two nuts now. Oh, two focus. And that's two damage in a crit. So Whisper, he's not going to cloak. He's going to keep her position for next time. So that engagement went poorly. Um, Nazis aren't coming up. Uh, zero evades on Zeb. Zero hits from Zeb. Iron Cannon, zero hits. Zero hits, zero hits. Yeah, lots of zero hits, so. I uh, was hoping to get at least one ship ironed and proton bomb it. Um, I'll see if I can force him into a proton bomb, but it seems unlikely at this point. So another pretty strong engagement for me. Again, dice were a factor, unfortunately. Can't claim too much credit. They uh, swung hard in my favour. Moving into what could now be a slightly tricky mop-up for myself. Um, I've definitely got the upper hand with what's left on the board. However, positionally, I'm not in the best place. So maybe a couple of slow turns to pincer or create something to finish the game off. So with time running out on the clock, um, I don't think we can bring this back. We're going to try and see some proto bombs and get some nice crits through. Um, if they do, maybe I can kill the bombers and swing it with favour, but it seems doubtful. So to start the system phase, I'm going to try and drop some proto bombs. Uh, we're going to start with this guy, just in case the bomber flies around this side to try and get out of arcs. And then the second y is going to drop this, just in case um, they're going through this gap here. So, number two y is going to go free forward. Now, I'm in range of that proton bomb, so I'm going to use my action to do a barrel roll. 
going forward. And last one I'm just going to do a soft two. And he is still stressed so he doesn't get an action. So the blinded bomber is trying to escape from the fight. Unfortunately into the arc of the Y-Wing. And he will just focus up. Bomber number one, he's banking around the corner. Taking a focus. So Captain Jones is rolling one forward. So it's going to bump into the other Y-Wing. And therefore we're just going to slide him along the edge into his mate. Whisper's doing the Phantom's favourite move. And he's going to barrel roll right to the back. So the end of the system phase, we're going to activate the bombs. Whisper takes one damage onto our shields. And number one and Jonas both take a proton bomb damage. And the Y-Wing also takes one unfortunately. So bomber number one is taking a panicked pilot to receive two stress tokens. And Jonas is taking a damaged engine to increase the difficulty of the turns. So the Y-Wings received a direct hit. So at the start of the engagement phase, Whisper is going to activate Darth Vader crew to deal the damage. And then roll four attack dice into the Y-Wing. Result in a hit, a hit and a crit. So we receive a hit. And the crit is wounded pilot. So after we perform an attack on a hit or crit, I receive one stress token. So why we number two is going to try and use the iron cannon to ion number one. Hey, finally. <laughs> Resulting in a hit and an ion token. So why we number three is going to use his primary weapon so I can do more than one damage onto number two because he's only got two health remaining. <laughs> two green dice for the bomber. Evaded. The ion skimmer at number one it will fire a barrage rocket into number two. So two health left on the Y wing. Using Captain Jones' ability to re roll the blank, resulting in three hits. Uh, regardless of what I roll, I'm going to die. Oh, natural. Yay! So at this point in the game, we're going to concede to Tom. Um, there's no way to come back with just one Y wing. Well done, Tom. And lucky on Good the dice, pal. Good game. Happens. Well played. Um, for me to have had any chance to continue the game, I think the wiring would have had to have not taken a direct hit from my own bomb uh, and then getting some damage on that two off bomber just so I could bring two ships versus three might have pulled something out, but it wasn't meant to be. So, overall, obviously happy with a win. However, there's no question that the dice played a part in that one. I'll be the first to tell you that they don't affect many games, certainly not the outcome, but they changed that one. So, at the end of the game, I don't think I would have done much differently. Um, I did actually call the fact that when the Proton Talk completely whiffed, the game was probably over. Even if I just stripped the tokens off the Phantom, I meant I could have ironed him, put him in a position where the bombs were going to hit him, and then dealt with the bombs later on. Uh, the fact that I completely whiffed meant I had to change targets and it just went downhill from there. Um, the only thing I would have done differently is gone for the joust, but Tom had the choice of initiative order, so he positioned a way that would stop that. So. Hopefully next time I can do the jazz instead. Whisper's positioning left something to be desired throughout. Learning her, um, getting to grips with, with the Phantom in general. Never used her through 1.0, so that's a, an interesting learning experience. Reasonably happy with how the bombers, they're not overly complicated. Bit of a bit of a sledgehammer, you put them in the right place and you take things out in front of you. Um, happy with how the positioning went through the early parts of the game. I misplayed the engage the first turn where shots took place on Whisper. I didn't rush the bombers forward where I should have to ensure the shots. Jack turn away proved to be a good move. After there though I felt as they slow rolled left into the corner they opened up lots of options. They gave Whisper a load of fire support so that we could start to remove targets and give Whisper a little bit more play. Uh, certainly got lucky without the target um, lock working for Jack so Whisper stayed alive and once Whisper escaped from the corner she was fine to go back to doing phantom things and the game looked fairly comfortable from that moment forward really. So there you have it, a great game between two great players ultimately decided on what was 
a really, really, really big whiff there. <laughs> a really big whiff. But often when you get those great games between good players, uh, it's going to come down to that one or two swings of variance one way or the other. Uh, so thank you for joining us for this episode. If you enjoyed it and you want to see more content going forward here on the Sith Taker YouTube channel, do make sure you get yourself in the comments below. Give us your feedback about how you're finding it all so far. Like the video and get sharing amongst your mates. And hopefully we'll see you back here again for episode 4 of Sith Tech 2.0 very soon. See you guys. Yeah.